over 25 years, F. Day Shack has taught creative writing, including at St. Edwards and Westwood High School. His efforts have previously been published in Blue Mesa Review, Seattle Review, The Black Scholar, Texas Observer, Santa Barbara Review, Utter, and other mags and anthologies. He is PhD in Humanities, was recognized from UT, UT Arlington, and he's a little bit crazy about his wife, Phyllis. Who I assume is sitting next to him. Hopefully. <laughs> That'd be very awful. <laughs> okay. Thanks. I, I uh, want to thank uh, both people, which is, if you're here, you already know it's the friendliest venue to unpublished authors. So mm -hmm. thank you for both people here. And Kimberly and the Austin Chronicle for going through those 600 and whatever. So thank you very much. Uh, since this is historical fiction, it is going to take a, just a, I'm going to make the briefest uh, preface because otherwise it, it doesn't make much sense. Uh, this is, um, takes place in New Orleans, and if I had known what happened last weekend, I would have put who dat in here, but I didn't. <laughs> but I didn't. Um, it's historical fiction, and if any of you know New Orleans, there was a district called Storyville. And Storyville was a legal red light district for 20 years, and it wasn't in the quarter. It was just on the other side of Basin Street with and employed about uh, 15,000 women and uh, saloons and bars and that's where ragtime turned into something they call jazz. So this takes place in Storyville, New Orleans and um, one thing that I need to say it's a one-sided conversation you're going to hear there's a reporter here that you <coughs> never hear but he's there and the biggest stretch that you're gonna have to make <laughs> it's a big stretch you're gonna to have to make as an audience is I'm a 24 year old girl. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you're gonna do that. <laughs> and the title uh, refers to cribs. The cribs were the tiniest, most desperate rooms in the quarter. Uh, and uh, Belloc's girl, there's a famous photographer, he was deformed and hydrocephalic, but he took these gorgeous pictures of these women and made them into art objects. So this is called Crib Death, Bellux Girl. Is that all you want? Price is the same, no matter what. You take up my time, you gotta pay. You sure that's all you want? You sure about that? Well, okay. All right. Come on in then. Time's money and I need it up front. Mornings are kind of slow, so let's say a dollar for a half hour. Fair enough? Just set it on the table next to the basin. That's what the bowl's for. Sorry there's no chair. Never needed one before. Nobody's wanted to just sit. We'll have to be on the bed, but sitting up. Now that's a change. Just talk? Are you sure? Nothing else? Sorry, the bed's not made up. I don't think it ever came with a bedspread or a comforter. Leastways, I never saw one. Never a comforter since I've been here. I can tell you that. The landlord was supposed to change the sheets last week, but hasn't changed in this month. Sorry again. If you don't mind, do your talking sort of on the soft side. I just got the baby over there asleep. Nah, we don't got a whisper or nothing like that. He's learned to sleep through almost anything. Yeah, good little kid, but getting too big for that crib. Let's see, 18 months old, day after tomorrow. Not as a rule, but the landlord lets me sleep here too. Lives right here with the baby. I don't know why he lets me. He's usually a mean son of a bitch. Wants a week's rent in advance, always complaining that he's losing money on this crib. Saying if this room opened up onto the street, he'd have thrown me out a long time ago out baby or not but let me stay here shows maybe he's getting soft in his old age maybe I'm the daughter he never had maybe he thinks the kids his I don't know no it ain't his but it does doesn't open out onto Marias opens about into nowhere these quarters are part of that house across the way across the courtyard the landlord split it into these eight cribs when Anderson County first came into being these quarters 
used to be slave quarters. Nothing ever changes, not even in a whole hundred years. My home sweet crib, nothing but the finest. The lady in the crib next door watches the baby for me when I have to go out on the street to advertise. Draw the Johns back to this hideaway crib. Sometimes I hand out cards, you know, business type cards to let them know where I am all the way back here. Or sometimes sneak in a cafe without money to buy a drink, blend in with the other barflies and hope they don't see me hustling their scores. Those I do manage to hoodwink and drag to this bed are usually skunk drunk or can't afford nobody else. Or else it's them young boys pretending they're old enough to act like fathers. Once in a while, a boozy teenager with only 50 cents left of his allowance. I'm not proud of what I do. On the other hand, I ain't ashamed either. Life is simple in that way around here. Yeah, the other six women in this old slave house are in the same way. Nobody to take care of them, some near starving. Lots of loving, but nobody that cares. Mostly staying in these little rooms, sleeping as much as it's possible to sleep, then sitting up in bed and dreaming still, dark in the daytime with the jalousy shut, dreaming of better times in the past, or times that never even happened, or dreams that slip between their fingers time and time again. For them, the wages of sin ain't death, it's staying alive. No, I don't exactly fit in with them or belong here, here before my time. Well, one reason is the baby. Easier to tend back here with no quotas. That's one reason I'm whoring in this rundown crib full of rundown whores. One reason. How old do you think I am? Go ahead, guess. Come on, try to guess. Damn, damn, that old? Do I really look that old? Really? Already? My age gets kind of confusing, but try to follow. I remember the day I first used makeup. Some lipstick, some rouge, at 16 trying to look older, lying about my age to get into places, drinking and smoking cigarettes and feeling excited when a man saw me as a woman, not as a childish girl. Then just four years later after that, I started trying to dress like a little girl because I heard they liked that. My auburn hair and pigtails, giggling at their sex jokes and acting shy like, exchanging my Gibson outfits for skimpy pinafores. And now, four years later after that, you say I look 10 years older than I really am and nothing left to make me look younger anymore. Damn, never thought I'd sell for my real age. You're say 25 or so, right? Right on the nose. Well, I won't be that for a couple of months. Yet I guess I do seem like an old lady. And you, well, you're just a kid. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. Sorry about that. It's just, you're where you should be. And I, I just don't know anymore. Besides fastback <laughs> Fanny next door, there's Ruby Raw Lips next to her, Rosie Knockers, and Sweet Cheek Susie. Both keep shop upstairs. I don't know the other three. They come and go, move on or die off. You say those are funny names? Are they? The men folks seem attracted to them. Suppose I've heard so many names for so long that I don't catch the humor in them anymore. Mind if I smoke? I gotta smoke. No, I better not. Trying to quit. That's why I bought my fingernails. Adelaide. I go by the name of Adelaide. Adelaide, this week. 